sir. One chair. Good. Speak to the mayors. Fall to it, Yali. Or we run us up a crowd. Mister, mister. Hi, my good heart. Jelly, jelly, my heart. Sorry, heart. Take the top back. Take the master. With a blow, I went first. Good smoking. Have care. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now. Keep oh, below. Where is the master boatswain? Do not hear him. You mar labor. Keep your cabin to do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is hence, what care these roars after the name of king? The cabin's silence trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I love more than myself. You are a counselor, are you not? If you can command these elements of silence and keep the peace of the present, we'll not hand her up more. If you cannot give thanks, you have lived so long. And get yourselves ready in the cabin for the mischance of the hour or so half. Dearly, my good heart, out of the way. I have great comfort from this fellow. He thinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. <laughs> Down with the two half. Darn, lower. Lower. Bring your try with main cards. Plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather or our office. Yet again, shall I go on drown? Have you a mind to sing? The pox in your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, and charitable dog! Work you oh, there! Hang a cur! Hang you horse, an insolent noisemaker! We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art! I'll mark him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell and as leaky as an unstanched wench! There a hold, a hold, say her two courses off the sea again. Lay her off. <laughs> 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 what must our mouths be cold? Well, the king and prince have prayers. Let's assist them for our causes is theirs. I'm out of patience. We are merely seen of alive by these drunkards and that white chat rascal. <laughs> With our lives drowned in the water, you have ten tides. He'll be hanged yet. Though every drop of water swear against it and gape at whites to glut him. Oh, oh, let us all sink with the king. Take our leave of him. Oh. Now would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground. Long heath, brown furs, anything. All thy wills above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. Oh. No more amazement. There is no harm done. Oh, the day. No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee. Thee, my dear one. Thee, my daughter. Who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am. For that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and I no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. This time I must inform thee farther. Lend a hand, pluck my magical garment from me. So. Lie thou there, mine heart. Oh, wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wrath which touched the very virtue of compassion in the 
I have so safely ordered within provision of my art that there is no soul. No, not so much perdition as a hair, but in any creature in the vessel that thou heardest cry, that thou sawest Satan. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, and then stopped, and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay not yet. The hour is now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Now obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for thou was not out three years young. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? Of any house or person? Of anything the image that hath kept in thy remembrance tell me? Tis far off, and rather like a dream more than the assurance which from my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women that tended me? Oh, Miranda, and more! How is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark, backwards, and abyss of time? If thou rememberest aught there thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I do not. Twelve years hence, Miranda. Twelve years hence thy father was Duke of Milan and the Prince of Power. Sir, are not you my father? <laughs> thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said, Thou wast my daughter. <laughs> and thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou his only heir, and princess, no worse issue. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we heard that we came from hence, or blessed that we did? Oh, both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, we were heaved hence, but blessedly hoped hither. My heart bleeds to think of the team that I turned you to, which is from my remembrance. Please, you, father. My brother, and thy uncle, called Antonio. I pray thee, mark me that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state. As at that time, through all the signories, it was the first, and Prospero the, Prospero the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity and of the liberal arts without parallel. Those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother. And being so transported, so wrapped in secret studies, my false uncle. Dost thou attend me? Sir, most hatefully. Being once perfected on how to grant suits and how to deny them, who to advance and who to trash for o'er topping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office, set all the hearts of the state to what tune pleased his ear, now that he was the verdue that had, the uh, ivy that had covered my princely trunk and sucked my verdue out on it. Thou attendest not. Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee mark me. Me. I, thus neglecting all worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that by which being so retired in my brother awakened an evil nature. And my trust, like a good parent, did beget in him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was, which indeed had, had no limits, a confidence sans bounds. He, being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like, like one who, having into the truth by the telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory, to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. And thus his ambitions growing, dost thou hear? Sir, your tale would cure death. To have no screen between this part he played and whom he played it for, he must needs be absolute Milan. And me, poor man, my library was dukedom enough. Of temporal royalties, he now thinks me incapable. Confederates, so dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples, to give him annual tribute, to pay him homage, to, to submit his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbowed, Poor Milan, to most ignoble stupid. Oh, 
Oh, the heavens. Now mark his condition and the event, and tell me if this might be your brother. I should sin but to think nobly of my grandmother. Good wounds have borne bad sons. First the condition. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should shortly extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother. Whereon, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonio ope the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Lack for pity. I not remembering how I cried out then will cry all again. And it's a hint that rings mine eyes to it. Hear a little further, and I'll bring thee to the present business that's now upon us, without the which this story would be most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Oh, well demanded, wench, my story provokes that question. Dear, they durst not. So dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so blood bloody on the business, but with colors fairer painted their foul ends. In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, drew us some leagues to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively have quit it. And there they hoist us, to cry to the sea they roar to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, cherubim, thou wast, oh, that did inform me. Oh, thou didst smile, infused with the fortitude from heaven. When I decked the sea with drops full salt under my birth and groan, which stood up, which stood up in me an underlying stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? Oh, by providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity and then being appointed master of this design did give us with, with rich garments, uh, linen, stuffs, and necessaries which since have steadied much. So out of his gentleness, he furnished me, knowing that I loved my book from mine own library with volumes I prize above my dukedom. But I might but ever see that man. Now I arise. Hear a little further, sit still, and I'll tell thee the last of our sea sorrow. Here in this island we arrive, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can that have more time for vainer hours, and tutors not so careful. And heavens thank you for it. Uh, now I pray you, good sir, for it is still beating my mind. Your reason for raising the sea storm. By accident. Most strange, bountiful fortune, now my dear lady hath brought mine enemies to this shore. And by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence now I court not but omit. My fortune shall ever after droop. Here, cease all questions, for thou art inclined to sleep. Is it good dullness? Give it way, for I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come! I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come! All hail, great master, brave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure. Be it to fly, uh, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds. To thy strong bidding, task Ariel and all his qualities. Spirit, hast thou performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article. I boarded the king's ship. 
Now on the waist, the beak, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. <laughs> Sometime I'll divide and burn in many places. Now on the top mast, the yards and the bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. <laughs> the fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune, seem to the siege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread tried and shake. Oh, that's my brave spirit. Who was so firm, so constant, that this coil did not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel, then all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here. Ah, uh, that's my spirit, but, but was this not my shore? Close by, my master. But are they aerial safe? Not a hair perished on their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. <laughs> and as thou bad'st me, in troops I have dispersed them about the island. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the aisle, and sitting, his arms in this sad knot. Ah. <laughs> oh, the king's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed in all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship. In the deep nook, where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermuthias, there she's hid. The mariners, all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep. As for the rest of the fleet which I dispersed, they all have met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, borne sadly home for Naples, supposing they saw the king's ship wrecked, and his great person perished. Oh, Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work. What is the time of day? Past the mid-season. These two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, moody? <laughs> what is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I pray thee. Remember, I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies. Made thee no mistakings, served without her grudge or grumblings. Ooh. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what torment I did free thee? No. Oh, thou dost, and thinkest it neat to, to tread upon the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp winds of the north, to do me business in the bowels of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a who? Hast thou? No, sir. Thou hast! Where was she born? Hmm? Tell me. Speak. Sir, in Argier. Oh, was she so? Oh. I must once a month recount what thou hast been, what thou forgettest. This Damned witch Sycorax, for sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from Argier, thou knowest was banished. And for one thing she did, they did not take her life. Is this not so? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and was here left by the sailors. And thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, was then her servant. But that thou, thou was a spirit too delicate to enact her earthy and, and abhorrent commands, she did confine thee with the help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisonment didst thou painfully remain a dozen years, which in which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, not honored with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Yeah, dull thing, I say so, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Thou best rememberest what torment I did find thee in. 
Thy groans did make the wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damp, one that Sycorax could not again undo. It was my art when I came and heard thee that may gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I'll rend an oak and peg thee in his knotty entrails till thou was howled away twelve winters. Pardon. Master, I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and within two days I shall discharge thee. <laughs> That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go, make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but mine and thine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take the shape and come hither with it. Go away, hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart. Awake. Ooh, thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your tale put a heaviness in me. Uh, come, shake it off. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who ne'er yields us kind answer. Tis a villain I do not love to look on. But as it is, we cannot miss him. He fetches us in fuel and makes our fire and serves us in offices. Uh, profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban! Thou earth, thou speak! There's one enough for thee! Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, thou when. <laughs> oh, fine apparition, my quaint Ariel. Hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself on thy wicked dam, come forth! As wicked do as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both. Southwest blow on you and blister you all over. Oh, for this be sure, tonight thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that will pen thy breath up. <clears throat> thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycombs, with each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. Silence mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou didst stroke me and made much of me. Gave me water with berries in it, and taught me to name the bigger light and the lesser that shines by day and night. And I did love thee then. I showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs and brine pits, barren places and fertile. Cursed be I that did that. All oh, the charms of Sycorax on you, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that thou hast, which was first mine own king. And now you sty me here in this hard rock whilst you keep from me the rest of the isle. Oh, most lying slave, whom stripes may move not kindness, I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, lodged thee in mine own cell till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. <laughs> Would that I had. Thou didst prevent me had I peopled else the isle with Caliban. Poor slave, which any prince of goodness wilt not take, but capable of all ill. I pity thee, took thy pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour of one thing or other, when thou savage had not known thine own meaning, but with gabble like a most brutish thing. I endowed thy purpose of words which made them known, but thy vile race, though thou didst learn it, had in it which good natures could not abide with. Therefore thou wast deservedly confined in this rock, and hast deserved more than a prison. You taught me your language. My provenant is I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Hag sheet heads, 
fetch us, fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Ooh, shruggest thou malice? If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill thy bones with aches, and make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. I must obey. His art is of such power it would control my damn god Satabos and make a vessel of him. Go, slave! Hence! Dogs bark, hark, hark, I hear a strain of strutting chanticleer. Cry, cock it little bell. Where should this music be? In the air <coughs> or the earth? It sounds no more. The shore, it waits upon some god of the island, sitting on a bank, thinking again the king, my father's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allied their fury in my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather, but tis gone. That's no, it begins again. Thy father lies, but his bones are coral made. The dark pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him that doth fade. But doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. See nymphs loudly ring his knell. Hark, now I hear them. Ding dong bell. Did he does remember my drowned father? This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. Fringe curtain of thy eye advance, and say what thou dost see yond. What is it? A spirit. Lord, look how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No wench. It eats and sleeps, and has such senses as we have such. The gallant that thou seest was in the wreck. And though he is something stained with grief that's beauty's canker, thou mightest call him a good Person, for he has lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, but nothing natural I've ever seen so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Oh, spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe, my prayer may know you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do less pronounce, is, oh, you wonder if you be maid or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language! Heavens! I am the best of them that speak this speech, where I but were just spoken. How? The best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself in Naples, who with mine eyes, never since that ebb, beheld the king my father's wreck. Alack for mercy. Yes, faith in all his lords. The Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. Oh, the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now twere fit to do it. <laughs> At the first sight, they have changed eyes. Oh, Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. Good sir, a word. For I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that I ever saw. And First that I sighed for. Pity move me, father's be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin in your affection not gone forth, 
I'll make you the Queen of Naples. Soft, sir! One word more! <laughs> they are both in either's power, but this quick business I must uneasy make, lest too light the winning make the prize light. One more word, sir! I charge thee, attend me, for thou dost put thyself on this island as a spy to win it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill that can dwell in such a temple as the ill spirit has so fair home. Good things will strive to dwell with it. Oh, follow me. Speak not you for him. He is a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, the withered roots, and the husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow! Ooh. No! I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he is gentle and not fearful. What, my foot, my tutor? Put up thy sword, traitor. Who makest this show, but darest not strike? Oh, thy conscience is so filled with grief. Come from thy ward. For I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy sword drop. Beseech you, father. The hands hang not on my garments. For pity, sir, <laughs> I'll be his surety. Silence! One more word shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. Hush! What, an advocate for an impostor? Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him in Caliban? <laughs> to the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections then are most humble. I have no ambitions to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirit is in a dreamer all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats, to whom I'm subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid? All corners else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Come. Ah, ah Ariel, thou hast done well. Follow me. Ha, what else thou shalt do? Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature than he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be free as the mountain winds, but yet do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. Beseech you, Lord, be merry. You have cause, so have we all, of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. Our heat of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the masters of some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe. But the rarity of it, I mean, our survival! You and millions can speak like us. Therefore, my lord, weigh our sorrow with our comfort. Prithee, peace. He takes comfort like cold porridge. Well, the visitor will not give him over, so. Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. How long he'll strike. Uh, sir. One tell. When every grief is comforted comes to the entertainer. A dollar. A dollar comes to him indeed. You have spoken truer than you have purposed. You have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord. We buy what is spend with you this tongue. Rithy, spare! Well, I have done. But yet... He will be talking. Oh, of, ooh, of which, for a good wager between him or Adrian, first begins to crow. The old cock. Okay, the cock rail. Done. <clears throat> the wager? 
a laughter, a match. Though this island seem to be desert, ha ha ha, so you're paid. Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet, yet, he will be talking. It must needs be of subtle, tender, and delicate temperance. Well, temperance was a delicate wench. I am a subtle, was he most learnedly delivered. <laughs> the air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Here is everything advantageous to life. True, it saved means to live. Of that there's none. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground is indeed tawny. So with an eye of green in it, oh, he misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. Uh -huh. That our garments, being drenched in the sea, seem to retain their freshness, and the glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? I a very falsely pocket of his report. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we first put them on in Africa, at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabelle to the king of Tunis. Yeah, it was a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis is never poor brace with such a paragon to their queen. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will take this island home in his pocket and give it to his son for an apple. Ooh, and sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands here. Aye. <laughs> Why, in good time. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we first put them on in Tunis, at the marriage of your fair daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that ever came there. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the day I first wore it? I mean, in a sort. Well, that sort was well fished for. When I wore it at your daughter's wedding. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. I had never married my daughter there, for coming thence. My son is lost, and in my rate, she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. Oh, mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made their meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him, and ride upon their backs. He trod the water whose enmity he flung aside, and breasted the surge most swollen that met him. His bold head above the contentious waves he kept, and awed himself with good arms and lusty stroke, to the shore that o'er his wave-worn base had bowed as stooping to relieve him. I not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss. It would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to far Africa, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath caused but the grief on. With thee, peace! You were kneeled to! and importuned otherwise by all of us. The fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience at which end of the beam should bow. We've lost your son, I fear, forever. Milan and Naples have more widows of this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the lost. My lord, Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and pine to speak it in. You rub the saw when you should. Bring the plaster. Very well. It is foul weather in all of us, sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I a plantation on this isle, my lord? He'd sout it with nettle seed. Mm -hmm. Docks, mallows. <laughs> and I were king on it. What would I do? Escaping drunk for want of wine. Ah, the commonwealth. I would with such contraries execute all things, but no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. Letters should not be known. Riches, poverty, use of service, none. Born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle. 
all, and women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king on. Oh, the ladder out of his common wealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, knife, pike, gun, or engine of any sort what I have need not of, that nature should not provide of its own kind. All foison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marriage among his subjects. Oh, none man, all idle whores and knaves. <laughs> I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. <laughs> and you mock me, sir? For thee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do believe, your highness. And did it to minister these gentlemen, who have such sensible and nimble lungs that they used to laugh at nothing. Oh, t'was you we laughed at. Who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you. So you may continue to laugh at nothing still. Oh, what a blow was there given. And is it not fallen flat long? <laughs> you are gentlemen of brave metal. Good, my lord. Be not angry. Uh, no, no, I warrant you. I'll not adventure this discretion further. Uh, will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. <laughs> what? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut off my thoughts. I feel they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir. Do not omit the heavy offer of it. Seldom visit sorrow, when it doth is a comforter. Me too, my lord, will guard your person, and watch your safety as you sleep. Thank you. Wondrous heavy. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not an hour eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They're felt together all as by consent. They're dropped as by a thunderstroke. Oh, what might! A worthy Sebastian, what might! <laughs> no more. <clears throat> Yet methinks I see it in thy face what thou shouldest be. The occasion speaks to thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping on your head. <laughs> What, art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, <laughs> and thou speak'st as in thy sleep. What didst thou say? You noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep. Die, if rather winkest thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. There's meaning in thy snores. Ah, you more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me to do what troubles the ower. Well, I am standing water. And I'll teach you to flow. Do so. To ebb hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, how you but knew the purpose you cherish while thus you mock it. How in stripping it you more invest it. Prithee, say on. The setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee, and a birth indeed, which draws thee much to yield. Oh, thus, sir. Although this lord of weak remembrance, for he's a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade the king his son's alive. Tis as impossible that he is undrowned as he that here sleeps swims. I have no hope that he's undrowned. And out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink but doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He is gone. Who then is the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from Naples can have no note, unless the sun repost. The man in the moon's too slow. The newborn chins were rough and razorable. She that from whom? We were all sea-swallowed. Though some of us were cast again, and 
by that destiny perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, and what's to come in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? It is true. My brother's daughter is Queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples, twixt which regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out. How shall that Clarabelle measure us back from Naples? Now keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wait. Say this were death that now hath seized them. They would be no worse off than they are now. There be lords who can rule as well as he that here sleeps, and lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this, Lord Gonzalo. Oh, if you but bore the mind that I do, what a sleep this were for your advancement. Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother, Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit on me. Hmm? Much better than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But what of your conscience? <laughs> Aye, sir, where lies that? I feel not this deity in my bosom. Oh, twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan, candied be they melt or they molest. Here lies your brother. No better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which he's like now, that's dead. And I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, could lay to bed forever, while you, doing thus a perpetual wink of an eye, put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who must not upbraid our course. And as for the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They will tell, they will tell this as to any say that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedence. As thou gots Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I bear my hand, you do the like to fall on Gonzalo. But one word. My master, through his art, foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in and sends me forth, or else his project dies, to keep them living. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy, his time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake! Awake! Let us both be sudden. Fire angels, preserve the king! Why, how now? Oh, wait. Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we were guarding your repose, even now there came a hollow burst of bellowing, as of bulls, or rather lions. <laughs> Did it not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, no. Twas a din to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Oh, nay, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon mine honor, sir, I did hear a humming, and that a most strange one. When I opened mine eyes, I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, sir, that's verily. I say, it's either best we stand our guard or quit this place. Well, let's draw our weapons. Lead off this crown. Let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is sure I the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. Infections that the sun. 
sun sucks up from fogs, fens, flats on prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, yet I needs must curse. But they'll nor pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way unless he bids them. <laughs> Yet forever trifle are they set upon me. Sometimes like apes that mow and chatter at me and after bite me. Oh, and then like hedgehogs that lie tumbling in my barefoot way, the mount their pricks at my footfall. And sometimes am I all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo, now lo, here comes the spirit of his to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat. Perchance he will not mind me. <laughs> Here's neither bush nor a shrub to bear of any weather at all. And another storm is brewing. I hear it sing in the wind. Yunt, same black cloud. Yond, a huge one. Looks like a fowl bombarded would shed his liquor. If it should thunder, as it did before. I know not where to hide my head. Yond, same cloud cannot choose to fall by palefuls. <laughs> what have we here? A man? Or a fish? <laughs> That or alive. Oh. A fish. He smells like a fish. <laughs> I kind of hate him then. Fish like smell. Huh. Strange fish. Legged? Like a man? His fins, like arms, <gasps> or move my throat. I do now let loose my opinion. <laughs> Hold it no longer. This is no fish, <laughs> but an islander that have lately suffered by a thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> the storm is coming again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. Oh, there's no other shelter hereabouts. <laughs> Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. <laughs> I will hear a shroud till the dregs of the storm be passed. Pitch, yet the tailor might scratch her where she did itch. <laughs> then the sea boys let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too. But here's my comfort. Do not torment me! <laughs> What's the matter? Have we devils here? Do you put tricks upon with savages? I have not escaped drowning to be afeard now of your. Four legs. <laughs> For it hath been said, as proper a man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground, and it shall be said so again while Stefano breathes at its nostrils. The spirit torments me, oh. This is some monster of the isle with four legs. 
Who hath got, as I take it, and a you? Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can recover him, keep him tame, get to Naples with him. He's a present for any emperor that ever trod on needs leather. Do not torment me, I prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now and does not talk up to the wisest. <laughs> he shall taste of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine afore, we'll go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. We shall pay for him. That hath him and that soundly. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt anon, I can see by thy trembling now prosper works upon thee. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. Oh, open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you. And that soundly. You cannot tell who's your friend. Here, open your chaps again. I should know that voice. It should be, but he is drowned, and these are devils. Ah, defend me! Four legs and two voices. A most delicate monster. This forward voice is to speak well of his friend, while his backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help him with his ague. Come, amen, I shall pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano, <laughs> doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave him. Stefano, <laughs> if thou best Stefano touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo, be not afeard. <laughs> thy good friend Trinculo. <laughs> if thou beest Trinculo, Come forth, I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, oh, these are they. <laughs> oh, oh, thou art very Trinculo indeed. Oh, how camest thou to be the siege of this wound calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? I took him to be killed of a thunderstroke, but art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of it, and art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, do a Neapolitan's escape! The pretty, do not turn me about. Oh, oh, my stomach is not constant. These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, then that's a brave god and bears celestial liquor. I will kneel to him! <laughs> How didst thou escape? How camest to there? Here, swear by this bottle, how camest to there? Oh. Oh. I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard, and by this bottle, which I made of the bark of tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear by thy bottle to be thy subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, swear how thou escapest. I swim ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Oh, here, swear to that, kiss the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. <laughs> oh, Stefano, has any more of this? Oh, the whole but, man, oh. my cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, Mooncalf? How does thine ague? Hast thou not dropped from the heavens? Oh, out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, and thy dog, and thy bush. I swear to that. Kiss the book. We'll furnish it anon with new contents. Here, swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him, 
a very weak monster. The man in the moon, a most poor, credulous monster. Well drawn, monster. In good soup. Mm -hmm. I'll show thee all the best qualities of the isle. I'll kiss thy foot, for thee be my god. I dislike a most perfidious and drunken monster. When God asleep, he'll rub his bottle. I'll, I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come then, down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. The most scurvy monster. I could find it in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. But that the poor monster is in drink. <laughs> An abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll, I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague on the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. Aww. <laughs> a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of this poor drunkard. Let me bring thee to where crabs grow. Show thee a jay's nest. I'll take thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I'll fetch thee young scammels from the rocks. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee, monster, lead the way without any more talking. Drink it up. The king and all our company else being drowned. <laughs> we will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle. We'll fill him by and by again. <laughs> Farewell, master! Farewell! Farewell! <laughs> a howling monster. A drunken monster. <laughs> no more dams I'll make for fish, nor fetch in firing at requiring, nor dig treasure, nor wash dish. Bang, bang, kick the a new master! Got a new master! of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point towards rich ends. This my mean task will be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's craft, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. <laughs> My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work. It says such baseness had never like executor. I forget that these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors, most busy less when I do it. Alas, how I pray you, work not so hard. I would have the lightning burnt up the locks that you are enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns too weak for having wearied you, my father is hard at study. Pray, set it down and rest yourself. Keep it safe for these three hours. Almost, oh, dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. <coughs> You'll sit down. I'll kill your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll clear it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back than such Dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as it does you, and I should do with much more ease, for my good will's towards, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art caught this visitation. 
shows it. You look warily. No, noble mistress. Tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you chiefly that I may set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I've broken your hast to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. Worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never any was so full soul. But some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, <laughs> so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my own sex, nor woman's face remember, save from my glass my own, nor have I seen what I may call men, save you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad I am skillless of, but by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world save you, nor can imagination form a shape but yourself to like of. <laughs> but I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I there and do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so, and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. From the very instant I saw you, did my heart fly to your service, and there resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake am I this patient log man. Do you love me? <laughs> oh, heaven. O oh, earth, bear witness to the sound and crown what I profess with kind event if I speak true. If hollowly invert what best has boded me to mischief, I feel an all in it of what else in the world do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I am glad of. Fair encounter of two most rare affections. Heaven rain grace upon that which breathes between them. Wherefore weep you? <clears throat> Mine unworthiness, I dare not offer what I desire to give, much less take what I'll die to want. Hence, bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife if you will marry me, otherwise, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant, whether you may or no. My mistress, dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband, then? Hi, with a heart as bondage, heir of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine with my heart in it. Now farewell to half an hour hence. A thousand, thousand. So glad of this as day I cannot be who art surprised withal. But my rejoicing at nothing can be more. For I'll to my books. For yet ere supper time must I perform much business appertaining. <laughs> Tell not me when the blood is out, but we will drink one. Drop <laughs> before. Therefore, bear up in boredom. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster, the folly of this island. <laughs> they say there is but five of us upon this isle. We are free of them. If the other two be brain like us, the state daughters. Drink! <laughs> Servant monster, when I bid thee, thy eyes are almost set in thy head. <laughs> Where should they be said else? You are a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. <laughs> my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam here. I could recover the shore. Five and thirty leagues off and on. By this light, thou shalt be my lieutenant. Monster or my standard. Your lieutenant, if you list. 
He's no stand. Oh, we'll not run, Monsieur Monster. Nor go neither, but you'll fly like dogs, and it's a nothing neither. Mooncalf, <laughs> speak once in thy life, if thou beest a good Mooncalf. How does thy honor? How oh, kiss thy foot? I'll not follow him. He's not valiant. Thou liest. Most ignorant monster, I'm in the case to jostle a constable. Why thou debashed fish thou? Is there ever a man, a coward, that have drank so much sick as I today? Will thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? <laughs> oh, see how he mocks me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Oh, my lord. Quote he, that a monster should be such a natural. Lo, oh, no one can bite him to death, I prithee. Shrink it up. Keep a good tongue in thy head. If thou prove a mutiner, the next tree. The poor monster is my subject, and he shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Will you hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Mary, will I kneel and repeat it? <laughs> I'll stand. And so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, who by cunning hath cheated me of the eye. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou! I would my valiant master would destroy thee! I do not lie! Trinculo, interrupt the monster in his tail once more, or by this hand, I'll supplant some of your teeth! Why, I said nothing. Mum, then! No more. Proceed. As I said, by sorcery hath he got this isle. For me, he got it! If thy greatness would revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dares not. <laughs> That's most certain. Then thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, I'll yield him the asleep. There, thou canst knock a nail into his bead. Thou liest, thou canst not. Thou scurvy patch! I beseech thy greatness, give him blows, and take his bottle from him. When that's empty, he shall have not but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger, or by this hand, I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish of thee. But why, what did I? I did nothing. I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Oh, do I so? Oh, take thou that! As you like it, give me the lie another time. I did not give thee lie! Out of your wits and bearings, dude. A box on your bottle. This can sag and drinking, dude. A moraine on your monster, and the devil take your fingers! <laughs> Pretty. Forward with your tail. Stand farther off. Beat him enough. After a time, I'll beat him to you. Stand farther. Come. Proceed. As I told thee before, tis a custom of his in the afternoon to sleep. There, thou canst brain him. Or, having first seized his books, with a log, thou canst batter his skull, or, or punch him with a stake, or cut his reasoned with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he is but a sot with not one spirit to command, for they all hate him as rootedly as I do. Burn but his books, and then what's greatest to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non-para. I myself 
I've never seen a woman but Sycorax, my damn, and she, but she far surpasses Sycorax as great does Lee. Is it so brave, alas? Aye, and she will become thy bed, I warrant. Bring forth brave brood. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will become king and queen. <laughs> Save all graces. And Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Excellent. <laughs> Give me thy hand. I'm sorry I beat thee, but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Why? On mine honor. This will I tell my master. Thou makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Will you troll again to the catch you taught me, but while At thy request, monster, I will do reason. Any reason. Come, Trinculo, let us sing. Flout them and scout them and scout them and flout them. God is free. That is not the tune. <laughs> what is this saying? This is the tune of our catch. Played by the picture of nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, Take this thou list! Uh, oh, forgive me my sins! He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee mercy upon him. Art thou afeard? No, monster. Not I. Oh. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises. Sounds and sweet airs that delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears. And voices that... If I had just awoken from long sleep, it would make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds me think would open to show riches ready to drop upon me that when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That will be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it. And after do our work. Lead, monster. We'll follow. I would, I could see this table. He lays it on. We'll come. I'll follow, Stefan. By locking, sir, I can go no further. My old bones ache. He is a maze fraud indeed of forthrights and meanders. By your patience, sir, my needs must press me. Old oh, Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here, I'll put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned, whom thus we straight find. The sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. Well, I am right glad he's so out of hope. Do not for one repose go the purpose you resolve to effect. The next adventure will be taken. Let it be tonight, for now they are oppressed with travel. They will not or cannot use such vigilance as when they are awake. I say tonight. Oh, what harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Marvelous, sweet music. Keepers, heavens, what were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe. 
believe that there are unicorns, that in Arabia there's one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both. And what does else want, credit, come forth, and I'll swear it is true. Travelers ne'er did lie, though fools at home condemn them. <laughs> if in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? That I saw such islanders? For certes, these are people of the island, who though monstrous in shape, yet note, the manners are more gentle kind than any of our human generation. Many, nay, almost any. Honest Lord, thou hast said well, for there are those of you present who are worse than devils. I cannot too much muse such shapes, such sounds, such gesture expressing, although they want the use of ton, a kind of excellent, dumb discourse. They vanish strangely. No matter, for they have left their viands behind. We have stomachs. Will it please you taste what is here? Not I. A faith, sir, you need not fear. I will stand to and feed, although my last. No matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord, the duke, Stand to and do as we. You are three men of sin, whom destiny hath caused to belch up you. And on this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live. I have made you mad, and even in such like valor men hang and drown their proper selves. <laughs> you fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of which your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or with the mocked at stabs kill the still closing waters. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too messy for your strengths and will not be uplifted. <laughs> but remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero. Exposed unto the sea, him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers, delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the sea and shores, yea, the very creatures against your peace. Fear of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wrath to guard you from is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing. Bravely the figure of this harpy hath thou performed, my Ariel. A grace it had, devouring. And of my instructions hath thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. And with good observation, these my meaner ministers, their several kinds have done. These my enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. And in these fits I'll leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine loved darling. By the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous. Monstrous. Methought the billow spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder pronounced the name of Prospero. I did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded. I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, and with him there lie mudded. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions on! I will be thy second, come on! All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work a great time after, 
begins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you, that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly, and hinder from this for hinder from what this great ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation here makes amends. But I have given you here a third of my life, or that for which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. Thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and strangely thou hast stood the test here. Before heaven, I ratify this my rich gift. Not smile at me, Ferdinand, that I do boast her off, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. And this my gift in thy own acquisition, worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies with Full and holy right be minister. No sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow. But sour I disdain, burden hate, and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly you shall hate it both. Therefore, take heed, as Hymen's lamps shall light you. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest end, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion our worser genius can, shall never melt my honor into lust, to take away the edge of that day's celebration. Oh, fairly spoke. <laughs> then sit with her and talk, for she is thine. Come, Ariel, my industrious spirit, come. What would my potent master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows this last business did worthily perform, but I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble or whom I give thee power here to this place. Incite them to quick motion, for I must uh, bestill a vanity of mine art upon the eyes of these two young couple. With my promise, and they expect it of me. Presently. Aye, with a twink. Before you can say come and go, breathe twice and cry so, so, <laughs> each one tripping on his toe. We'll be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master? No? Really, my delicate Eric. Do, do not approach until thou dost hear me call. Well, I can see you. Do you look thou be true? Mm. Do not give dalliance too much the rain, for the strongest O's are strong to the fire and the blood. Be more abstemious, or good night thy vow. I warrant you, sir, the white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the arbor of my liver. Well, <laughs> come, Ariel, bring a corollary rather than want the spirit appear and perfectly. No tongues, all eyes, silence. Most bounteous lady, thy rich lease of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peace, thy turfy mountains where live nimbling sheep, and flat meads thatched with stove for them to keep, thy pole picked vineyard and thy sea marge, sterile and rocky hard, where thou thyself dost air the queen of the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I. Bids thee leave these, and with her sovereign grace to come and sport her peacocks fly amain. Approach, rich Ceres, her to entertain. Hail, many colored messenger that ne'er dost just obey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffuses honey drops, refreshing showers. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to the short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estate on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son, as thou dost know, do now attend the queen. Of her society, be not afraid. I met her deity cutting the clouds towards Pappas and her son, dubbed drawn with her. Here thought they to have done some 
wanton charm upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bedright shall be paid till Hymen's torch be lighted. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes, I know her by her gate. My bounty sister, go with me to bless this twain that they may prosperous be and honored in their issue. Honor, riches, merit, blessing, long continue once and increasing. majestic vision and harmoniously charmingly. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, which by mine are, I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare wondered father and wife makes this place paradise. Oh, sweet silence. Oh, Juno and Ceres do whisper seriously. There's something more to do. Hush and be quiet or else our spell is mine. You nymphs called naiads of the windering brooks, with your sudden crowns and ever harmless looks, leave your crisp channels and on this green land answer your summons. Juno does command. Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate the contract of true love. Be not too late. You sunburned sycamore of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday. Your rye straw hats put on and these fresh nymphs encounter every one in country footing. I forgot the foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost here. Well done! Avoid no more! This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day have I seen him touched with anger so distempered. I see, my son, as if you are in a moved sort. Be cheerful! Our revels are now ended, and these are actors, as I foretold, were all spirits, and have melted into air, into thin air, and, and like the baseless fabric of this vision, the, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all that it inherits shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant fag faded, Leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, so, uh, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness, my, my brain my brain is troubled. Be not disturbed by my infirmity. If, if you do please, retire into my cell and there repose. Uh, turn or to our walk, still my beating heart. 
We wish you peace. <clears throat> Come with a thought, Ariel, I thank thee. Come! That I thought I'd meet you. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. <laughs> I, my commander. When I brought Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again where thou didst leave these varlets. I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So full of valor that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my tabor, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. Thus I charmed their ears, that calf-like they my lowing followed through, sharp briars, tooth furzes, pricking goss and thorns that entered their frail shins. Yeah. <laughs> At last I left them in the filthy mantled pool beyond your cell, there dancing up to the chins that the foul lake or stunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape, invisible, retain now still the trumpery in my house. Go! Bring it hither. I go, I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature and nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I'll plague them all, e'en to roaring. Come, hang them on this land. Hear a footfall. We are now near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Ah, monster, I do smell a horspice, at which my oh. nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, Look, you! Thou aware but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient, for the treasure I shall bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly, all is hushed as midnight yet. Aye, but to lose our bottles in the pool. There's not only disgrace and dishonor in that, mm. but infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding, monster. Yet this is your harmless fairy. I will fetch off my bottle. i be over ears for my labor. Pretty my lord. See here. This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do the good mischief that will make this isle thine own forever. And I, thy Caliban, for I thy foot liquor. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. <laughs> oh, King Stefano. Oh, fear. Oh, work with Stefano. Look what a workroom here is for thee. Then it alone, thou fool, it is my trash. Oh, ho, monster. We know what belongs to a frippery. Oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Trinculo. Or by this hand. I'll have that gown. <laughs> Thy grace shall have it. Oh, Dropsy drown this fool. What means he to dote us on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake from <clears throat> toe to crown, he'll fill our skin with pinches, make a strange stone. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Line is not to this. My jerkin is cold. <laughs> now it's a jerkin under the line. <laughs> Do you do? We steal by line and level. Ain't like your grace. Ha! I thank thee for that jest. Oh, 
it is a god before, which shall not go unrewarded, but I am king of this country. <laughs> Monster, come, put some lime upon your fingers and away with the rest. I'll have none on it. We shall lose our time and be turned to, to barnacles or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help bear this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. But Go yes. to! Carry this. And this. I. And this. Hey, mountain! <laughs> Project gathers to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. Say, spirit, how's the day? And past the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so when first I raised the tempest. Say, how fares the king and his companions? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as he left them. All prisoners, sir, and the line broke, which weather friends your cell. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, with the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. <laughs> but chiefly, him that you termed, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works in that, if you now beheld them, your affections would prove tender. Doth thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hath thou who art but heir a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself one of their kind Relish all as sharply passion as they be kindlier moved than thou art. Yet with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick. Yet with my nobler reason against my fury I do take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose does not extend a frown further. Go, release him, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye, that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune and do fly him when he comes back. And you, demi-puppets, who by moonshine do the sour green ringlets make whereof the youth bites not. And you, whose pastime it is to make the midnight mushroom that rejoice to hear solemn curfew. By whose aid Weak 
masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, set forth the mutinous winds, and to the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rift Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers oped and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music as E and I do now to work my ends upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff and bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Salamair and the best comforter for an unsteady fancy cure thy brains, now useless, boiled within thy skull. There stand, for you are spell stopped. <coughs> Holy Gonzalo, honorable sir, mine eyes e'en social to the show of thine fall fellowly drops. The charm dissolves apace, and so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that did mantle their clearer reason. O oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to whom thou followest, I'll pay thy graces home in both word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonzo, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a furtherer in the act, and thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. <coughs> Flesh and blood. You, brother mine, who entertained ambition, expelled remorse in nature, who with Sebastian, who therefore's inward pinches are most strong, would here have killed your king. I forgive thee. Unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. Ariel, fetch me my hat and rapier in myself, and I will disgrace me and myself present as I was sometime along. Quickly, spirit. Not shall ere long be free. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip smell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry. On a bat's back I do fly. Path the summer merrily. Merrily, merrily shall I live now Under the blossom that hangs on the bough ah, That's my dainty spirit I shall miss thee But thou shalt have thy freedom So, so, so To the king's ship as invisible as thou art, there thou shalt find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and the boatswain being awake and force them to this place. I pray thee, pray thee. I drink the air before me and return or ere your pulse twice beat. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement that inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King! The wronged Duke of Milan, for more assurance that a living prince doth talk to thee, I embrace thy body. And I bid thee and thy company 
A hearty welcome. Whether thou beest he or no, or some enchanted trifle to excuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends with which I fear a madness held me. A most strange story. Thy dukedom I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? At first, honorable lord, oh, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear it. Oh, you do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. But welcome, my friends all. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded I could here pluck his highness's frown upon you and justify you traitors. But at this time, I'll tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No. To you, most unnatural sir who Ian to call brother would infect my mouth. I forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and request my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou be a Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, who three hours since were wrecked on the shore, I have lost. Sharp point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. Uh, I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss. Patience says it is past her cure. Well, I rather think you have not sought her soft grace, for for the light loss, I have her sovereign grace and rest myself content. You the light loss. As great as late <coughs> and supportable to make the dear loss, as I have means less and much weaker than you may call upon to comfort you, for I have lost a daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there, that it were. I wish myself were mudded in that easy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords do so much admire that they devour their senses and scarce think their eyes do offices of the truth. But howsoe'er you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, that very duke who is thrust forth of Milan, who upon this island where you were wrecked was landed to be lord of. Yet no more of this, for tis a trifle of day to day and not a relation for breakfast nor befitting this our first meeting. <clears throat> Welcome, sir. Uh, this cell is my court, and here I have few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Since my dukedom you have given me again, I pray you, look in, and I will requite you with as good a thing, at least set forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Prove a vision of the island. One dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. A wonder. How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is. Uh, tis a new brave new world that has such a people in it. Tis new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Our elf's acquaintance cannot be more than three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, whom so often I'd heard renown, but never saw before, whom I received a second life, a second father this lady makes him to me. I am hers. Oh, but 
how odd it will sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. Oh, there, sir, stop. Let us not burthen our remembrance with the heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept. I should have spoke ere thus. Look down, you God, and upon this couple drop a blessed crown. For it is you who have chalked the way which brought us hither. Say, amen, Gonzalo. <laughs> Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice. In one voyage did Clarabelle her husband find at Tunis, then the Ferdinand her brother found a wife, when he himself was lost. Prospero his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me our hands. Such grief and sorrow still embrace his heart, but doth not receive joy. Be it so! <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Oh, look, sir, look, sir, here's more of us. I prophesied that if gallows were on land, this man would not drown. What is the news? Why, why, the best news is we have safely found our king <laughs> and our company, an ex-star ship, who, three glasses since, we gave our split. It is tight and vast and yar and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. Oh, my tricksy spirit. <laughs> These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how came you hither? If I did think, sir, I'll strive to tell ye. We were dead asleep, and now we know not all clapped under hatches, where we but even still heard strange and several noises of Roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling of chains, and a more diversity of sounds. All horrible. We were awakened straight away at liberty, where we beheld in all her glory our royal good and gallant ship. Even in a dream, we were divided from them, and were brought moping hither. What's well done? Bravely, my diligence. This Thou shalt be free ere long. This is as Strange amazes ere men trod, and there is in this business more than nature was there conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infect your mind with beating on the strangeness of this subject. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly, single I'll resolve to you, of which all things shall seem certain. All these happened accidents. Therefore, be well, and think of all things merry. Spirit. Release Caliban and his companions. Untie the spell. How fares my gracious lord? Uh, there are yet missing of your company a few odd lads you remember not. Man, shift for all the rest and let no man take care for himself. For all is but fortune. Coraggio, uh, holy monster. Coraggio. Peace be true, spice which I wear in my head, here is a goodly sight. Oh, set of host, these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is! I am afraid he will chastise me. What things are these, my lord Antonio? A money buyer? Most likely, although that word is more like a plain fish, and thus marketable, eh? <laughs> Mark but the badges of these, lo of these men, my lords, and say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong could control the moon. These three men have robbed me, and this demi devil, though he is a bastard one, plotted with them to take my life. These two you must know and own. This thing of darkness, acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? He is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo was reeling right. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded them? Say, how camest thou in this pickle? Oh, I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that I fear me will never out of my bones. I shall not fear fly blowing. How now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not, for I am not Stefano. <laughs> oh. What a cramp. 
You'd be king of the Isle, Sarah. I should have been. I saw one then. This is as strange a thing as e'er I looked on. Yeah, he is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, Sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions, as you seek to have my pardon trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will. And I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go, hence! And bestow your luggage where you found it, or stole it, rather. <laughs> Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you will take your rest this one night, which uh, I think I'll waste most of it with such discourse as will make it go quick by. The story of my life and the hap happened accidents gone by since I came to this island. And in the morning, I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I hope to see the nuptial of these, my dear beloved solemnities. And thence, retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gale, and sail so expeditious shall catch your royal fleet far off. Is thy charge. To the elements be free. And fare thee well. Pray ye, draw near. 